matters because money really does equal control in some situations. So I appreciate your position on that. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, maybe you could elaborate on why cutting the Hope Scholarship to students was a good idea. So you'd have less students that are accessible to a college. It wasn't a good idea. I just didn't have enough votes. It wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> But, but one of the reasons that was offered is that there was concern that, that, that at some point uh, lottery funds are going to flatten out and that we're going to have more students uh, who, who qualify for those funds than, than we have funds to provide. And one of the things that as a general assembly we committed to is that, that we would not, use, would not go into the state treasury to fund the whole college. It's going to be funded totally by lottery dollars. Um, it's a serious issue. One of the one of the things that we've done that, that hasn't made the media is that they've done uh, an audit of, of the lottery funds from the, the, the start of the program through the day. And, and there is one report that indicates that there's about one point six billion dollars that should have been transferred to the lottery that didn't make to, to the Hope Scholarship that didn't make it. So so next week we'll be in Atlanta, uh, grilling Margaret D. Francesco, the, the head of the lottery. And we want her to either bring us a check for 1.6 billion or tell us where it went. <laughs> but uh, there is a concern that at some point there will be more students than dollars to fund the whole scholarship. So there are a lot of ideas that, that come up about the whole scholarship program, uh, and it, it, it is not as safe as, as we would like for it to be. Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like to know how you would suggest that we get college students more involved in political. Uh, well, for me, uh, I think if, if you if you listen to what I said when I, when I first started, if you just look at those pieces of legislation that have a direct impact on you, and you look at what we're trying to do to influence your life or control how you live your life, and if that, if that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what we uh, There are a lot of things that, you know, I, as, as I look at some of the things that come before the General Assembly, uh, if they had been law when I was here at Augusta State University, Augusta College back during that time, I would have been in big trouble, big trouble, especially if somebody had called me. And, and I would imagine that a lot of you guys are in the same boat. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not the, the right police officer, the police officer comes across you that night after you leave campus or left some party. Uh, we are, we are, we are doing a lot more in terms of legislating behavior. And, and as it relates to you young people, the concern that I have is that, that we are creating an environment where you can't make a mistake. And, and I know when, when, when I was younger, I made a lot of mistakes. And I had my parents, and I had folks in the community, and I had professors who, who kind of helped me get through those mistakes. Now, uh, kids make mistakes, and they're sent to prison for 10 years. Or they're, they're required to put their name on a, a sexual predator's list. Or, or something that, that, that's irreversible. And so from that standpoint, uh, for me as a parent, for me as a legislator, that gives me some, some concern. Thank you very much. Okay. And you can register to vote, Dr. Jones. Yes, sir. Um, my question is actually about better registration. Uh, do you have any ideas about to increase better registration and also better turnout in elections? Yeah. There, there are. Uh, there are a lot of ways. I mean, every every election cycle, uh, uh, there is a candidate that, that I'm aware of that come up with a voter registration drive. Uh, the 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 key seems to be if you talk to the the party officials, the key seems to be an issue, some issue that will motivate folks to, to get out the vote, uh, some issue that 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 you makes you believe that 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 it's important for you to go right now. Uh, I'm told by every expert out there that, that folks uh, of the college age students don't see where they have an impact on the system. And they don't think that their vote matters. And so why waste their time to go and vote? Uh, every election that I've participated in, and that I've been a candidate in Ruben County, the, the turnout has been somewhere between 17 and 20 percent. Uh, that's, that's pretty dismal. Uh, and that's, been, that's become pretty consistent here for Richmond County. Uh, so we're going to have to find some way to, to motivate people to let you know uh, that it's important for you to get out and participate in the process. Yes, sir. Um, I was reading an article in Nation just to cite my source. <clears throat> How much of that view, that phenomenon of low voter turnout, 
would you ascribe to, uh, I think, the, in the current presidential race, the numbers I saw cited that 86% of the candidates' coverage was about meaningless things like their haircut and the price of it or their sexual preference or things like that, and only about 14% of the coverage was on the issues. Do you think the media plays a role in trivializing political races and that it in, in a way contributes to that low turnout and apathy? Certainly the media plays a role, but, but the issues that are talked about during it, the issues that are talked about during any campaign are issues that, that you guys decide. I mean, I don't, I don't get to pick the issues. Uh, you do. Well, um, and, 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 and the thing is, I think there's a, there's a narrow line, there's a balance, okay? Uh, you know, what does it take to, to get you to vote for me? And, and, and your question kind of makes me think back to the first time I ran. You know, I, spent, I spent hours, you know, developing my platform, uh, talking about policy, studying policy, studying the budget process. And I couldn't wait to get to my first forum so I could share with all my new friends all the, the information I knew about policy and budgeting and, and how uh, I was going to propose all these, these initiatives to make your life better. Uh, I ran into a brick wall because you didn't, none of the folks who attended wanted to hear about all that. They, they wanted to know, you know who I was married to and how many kids I had and what kind of car I drove and how much money is in my bank account and, and whether or not I had been married before. And, and if I was still married, what, what, what my girlfriend's name was. And so, I mean, that's, 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 that's decided by you folks. Uh, I'm sure all of those candidates have substantive materials that they love to sit and talk to you about for days and days, but they have to, they're going to talk about those issues that they think will keep you in the room and keep you at the table. And right now, uh, the, the more personal issues seem to be the, the issues that carry the day. Yes, ma'am. The most substantive issue you'd like to call the um, You know, my, 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 my passion right now is economic development. You know, I, uh, as, as I shared with some of the folks in here, I, I, I'm from Augusta. My wife's from Augusta. Uh, we both graduated from Glen Hills High School out in South Augusta. Um, she came directly here. I, it took me a year to get here, but I came to Augusta College back then and, and graduated. And, and after, after leaving college, we had the we had the privilege that we were able to move away. Uh, I was at ROTC over here, one of those buildings, and, and, and the army decided that they were going to send me uh, to Korea and then to Oklahoma. So I, I got a chance to live. Beverly and I married, and we got a chance to live uh, Oklahoma and North Carolina and, and Texas for about six years. And and at the end of that time, um, uh, we made the decision that we were we were going to stop the we were leave the military. And we wanted to come back to Augusta, Georgia to, to, to raise our families and uh, this is where we were going to make, home, make our home. And then we were going to not only live here, that we were going to be a part of the growth of this community. So, so I like to see the community grow. As I look out the window and, and, and see the bulldozers and, and what you're doing on campus, uh, that's what I think that we need to do to, to grow our community. Uh, when I was here, there were the old bags with the asbestos in the what they call them. Uh, and, and was told that they would never go anywhere. You know, I applaud Dr. Budworth and his staff for what they've been able to do. They were, they were tenacious. Uh, they did some things. They were able to do some things that for, for years, uh, folks here in the Somerville area said it couldn't be done because they couldn't get their approval. Uh, I'd like to see us take the same type of attitude and use it uh, in the community to have some things that need to be done. Uh, uh, and, and in order to make those things happen, it's going to require some debate. Uh, in order for us to set up our audience. But, but I think that, that economic development is the key. We have to grow this community. Uh, uh, we've had some help with, with Fort Gordon, but, but uh, the, the weakest link right now in, 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 in our community is that we, for so many years, relied on, on manufacturing-based uh, industry in this area, and all that's going away. I mean, we continue to find uh, incentives and, and other things to keep them here, but, but realistically, we can expect within the next 10 to 12 years that, that the industry of like international paper and Procter and & Gamble and those, those types of, of corporations that have employed thousands of investors for years, uh, they're going to go away because they can't compete. Uh, they, they just cannot compete with the products that they manufacture and, and continue to, to, to provide those services here in Augusta. So we, we're going to have to, to find something to replace those. 